This is East Idaho Newsmakers with Nate Eaton. Welcome to East Idaho Newsmakers. I want to start today's show by reading an article from the Salt Lake Tribune published in May of 2015. For these Mormon moms, their coming out as activists often follows the same storyline. They're fairly traditional Latter-day Saints. Their sons or daughters announce that they are gay. They search high and low for LDS advice about how best to love their children. They find their church's Mormon and gay, mormonsandgays.org website and plenty of counsel for rearing straight kids, but they hear little from their religious leaders about how to help their gay loved ones navigate the path to adulthood. Their offspring mostly stop attending church. In desperation, the Mormon mothers turn again to the internet. They find mama dragons. Today, we have two Mama Dragons joining us. Debbie Glenn is the mother of Neon Tree singer Tyler Glenn. Tyler came out to her as gay in 2013 and maintained his membership in the LDS church for a few years, but he has since left the faith. Now, Debbie recently spoke at Idaho State University about her and Tyler's experience and being a member of the Mama Dragons. Lori Embry is here. She describes herself as a feminist ginger from Parker, Idaho. She currently lives in Rigby. She was a mama dragon before literally becoming a mama dragon when two of her children told her that they were bisexual. Lori has taught at a university and she works closely with gay and lesbian students. Lori, thank you for being here. Thank you. So Debbie, we're gonna, we're gonna start with you. Let's go back to 2013. You have a son who's 30. He was 29 at the 29. time. 29, yes. he's uh -huh. famous, he's in the neon trees, he's yes. Mormon, and he tells you he's gay. Yes. We were on a trip returning from Indiana, and he says, Mom, I've got something very important I want to tell you. And I said, okay, and I'm driving the car. He said, I'm gay. Now, so many things start running through. That's not what I expected him to tell me. Um, at first, I was in shock. I said to him, you're just kidding, because he's the one that always wanted to get the shock value out. He wanted to get reactions from me on all kinds of things. Um, but my first thought really was, this is my son, I love him, is he okay? How brave he is to tell me that he is gay after all of these years. And he said, you can ask me anything. And the one question I asked him was, when did you know? And he said, mom, since I was three. And I said, wow. I said, I've, I've never known the answer to that question, and I knew that he was telling me his truth. This is um, a kid who doesn't lie, and um, it has been an incredible journey for us. He tells you this, you're an active member of the LDS Church, yes. still are active yes. in the church. Mm -hmm. Did you become a little conflicted in your mind over what the church was teaching versus you know his sexuality or or did that even come into play didn't even come into play for me because i have felt that i have learned from being a member of the lds church that god loves all of his children my charge as a mother is to love all of my children just as he would therefore nothing that any of my kids could ever tell me would make me stop loving them or kick them out or not want to be a part of their life so I didn't feel that there was any conflict at the time. Tyler spoke to Rolling Stone and talked about his faith at the time, how it was strong and he still believed in, in many of the teachings and wanted to maintain his faith. But then November of 2015, the LDS Church came out with a uh, policy uh, announcing that those who enter into a same-sex marriage are considered apostates and that children of same-sex couples, of gay couples, would be baptized only if they disavowed uh, gay cohabitations and marriages. When that came out, a lot of people first thought it was fake, right. that it wasn't true, and then, and then it, it was shocking to many people. What was your reaction and Tyler's reaction? When you just read that, I haven't read that since that day, and uh, it's, it just hits me to the core. We were with Tyler that day when that came out. And to have him share with me how he felt that, that a line had been drawn in the sand and that he was no longer welcome to worship, that God didn't love him anymore, and that he felt he didn't have a place. And that, as a mom, just really, really hurt. And, and it has been a conflicting issue for me and for my husband.
Lori, this is the first time you've publicly spoken about this. <laughs> it's kind of scary. It's, it's kind of scary. I have a new level of respect for our LGBT kiddos that have to face this every day. I have a best friend that has just been part of my life since forever, and I think I've always known that he's been gay, but, you know, in the 80s, I didn't even know that the village people were gay. Come on, I did just, it didn't cross my mind. Um, and I remember going and, um, when I did find out, I, I remember going and pleading with God to change him. <laughs> and I will always regret that. That will be one of the things I think I will always regret. And uh, I prayed and prayed for months. And one day I got an answer. And that answer was, it's, it is not a sin to be. Um, and it took a while for me to let that sink in. I think it's going to sink in for the rest of my life. That it is not a sin to be. And the word be means, you know, a noun and a verb. It's not, it's not a sin to exist. And it's not a sin to love and be loved. It doesn't get any more complicated than that. And is that when you decided to join the Mama Dragons group? Well, um, I've always been a, a fierce advocate for my friend. So it wasn't any surprise that uh, when students at the university where I taught kind of, I don't know, they have a network. <laughs> and, and they would tell people that, you know, I was the one to go to if you needed somebody to talk to that was old. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, and so they would come to me and they, these were fantastic human beings of great faith um, that just wanted to figure out how to navigate the world like we all do, um, but felt suffocated. I, and they just needed somebody to love them. And, you know, I'm a mom, so that's what I do. <laughs> when did your children come out to you? This last summer. Um, I was at a Mama Dragon retreat, and my husband was in California with, with one of our daughters. And uh, the cool thing about it is that neither one of it made it a big deal. It was just like saying, oh, yeah, by the way, I, I have a date to the prom, hmm? you know, and, and it was treated like, wow, you got a date to the prom, that's awesome. It wasn't like a, oh, it's a big deal. It was more like a, I'm so glad that, it, that this is happening for you. That's awesome. Debbie, the Mama Dragons, there's over a thousand members at this point. Mm -hmm. It started off as, as Mormon mothers, but it has since taken off to include women of all faith or no faith at all. Exactly, absolutely. We are there to support each other. We all have a different journey. We have different thoughts, different faiths. We approach things differently. We feel things differently, and we embrace that about each other. When I found the Mama Dragons, it was after I had spoken at Affirmation, a group in Provo, Utah, about a year and a half ago. And uh, after I got done speaking with my son, um, I was rushed with all these women. And they were handing me pins and various things. And I just didn't know that this community even existed. And I just felt instantly embraced and loved. And um, it's just uh, wonderful to know that they share the same feelings that we've all had, that we love our children fiercely. For a lot of people, I would imagine, it, it's got to be uh, I don't know if challenging is the word, but you're dealing with a child whom you love and in a lot of cases of faith that you love and deeply believe in that don't line up perfectly. And so how much of a reassurance is it to realize that there's hundreds of other women out there in your same situation? It doesn't make me think I'm crazy. It makes me, it validates me that, that my feelings about the church that I love 
that I can disagree with this policy, yet I can still be a faithful member of the church, mm -hmm. that I love the gospel with all my heart. And I've also realized that my faith in God and Jesus Christ came before I was a member of this church. And so that is probably what has helped to sustain me, is that he knows the plan for me. And I now know that my place is to stay and to be there for other young people. Lori, there's going to be people that say, how can you have both? How can you have a child who's gay and be a member of a church that has a policy that, that you know, says that if you're in a same-sex marriage, it's apostasy. And if you have uh, children that want to be a member, they need to disavow their parents. Is it simply that you just disagree with it and accept everything else? How does it work? I guess it's probably different for everybody. Wow, um, this is a hard one because something happened. You know, when, when the news leaked, um, I thought it was a joke. <laughs> no, my church would not do that. It, no, that's, that's just not true. And then when it came out that it was true, I think something finally clicked that um, I'm not sure if I can be in a place that my kids aren't welcome. I, I don't know if I can do that. Um, and then on the other hand, I think, oh yeah, I'm going to do that so that they can have a place there too. And so that's currently where I am. At one point, um, I was asked just that Saturday after the, after the leak, I was asked to, to um, fulfill a calling. And it just came to me right then. I said, as soon as my children and my gay brothers and sisters can hold those same callings, I am all over it. And he has asked me a couple of times since then, and I'll say, well, I don't know, has the policy changed? <laughs> and um, Do you think the policy will change? I do. The original policy, as was put out, has already changed a little bit. Mm -hmm. Some words have been changed out of it. Um, I think, I hope that it will. Have you received any sort of um, backlash or heat from the community where you live or online for being a member of the Mama Dragons uh, and being Mormon? For me, living in California, we're pretty liberal. Um, I have a very supportive bishop, a wonderful congregation of people that have known my family for 30 years. Um, so I have felt no backlash. I have uh, heard from so many young people uh, who are like, keep up, keep up your good work. I love the way you support your son. They want to know how I can support him in all the things he does at the same time still attend. Um, and I just share, I, I love. I love my son and I'm going to support him. And if I don't like something he does, he knows I don't like it. And it's okay. <laughs> we have good communication. Moms love everything their sons do. Well, I mean, all right. our children. I love all my children. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Lori, has the situation been the same for you in East Idaho? Not quite. <laughs> um, I don't want to say anything besides uh, loving pushback. I don't know if that makes sense, but there has been, there have been some, um, there's been some costs uh, that come with this because we're a very conservative area and we're very. Um, set in our ways and I love that about us and I don't love that about us sometimes um, and yes I have been lovingly chastised that you know well your revelation must be wrong <laughs> and you better align yourself or you know just little things like that and they've all been done in love um, but I, I feel like we have a lot of work to do here. Mm -hmm. Debbie, let's talk about uh, Tyler's video. Mm -hmm. Well, the, his album. It's called okay. Excommunication. Ex mm -hmm. That came about, from what I understand, 
after the church came out with the, the policy. Yes. Did you know he was working on it? You, you did? Yes. And, and when it was done and he played you some of the songs or uh, one of the videos that, of course, went viral in, in, in a way, trash, mm -hmm. um, it's, it's offensive to a lot of members of the church. Absolutely. And it's, uh, it, it's shocking and, and um, you know, I'll, it got a lot of play. A lot of people were talking about it. What was your reaction to the video, the album? Well, he started writing uh, right after the November 5th time. He began to write immediately. He, it's what he's always done, just writes all of his feelings down and then puts things to music. And I knew that he was working on something very serious because he went through a very serious time for about three or four months. So then I met him in the studio in April of last year and we, he says, I want to play you the album. It's mixed, it's not totally finished, but like you hear it. So I sat and listened and it, it just was this musical masterpiece to me of this journey of a young man trying to be faithful to a God that he was taught about but losing that faith and then coming and realizing that he still has hope in something. Um, and then he showed me the trash video. We sat together in the studio with his producer and we watched it and it got done and I felt paralyzed as I sat there and he said, what do you think mom, wasn't it great? And i like, well, not exactly. <laughs> um, I, I told him I felt it was sacrilegious. Um, I felt offended, and yet at the very same time, I was mostly shocked that he could portray all of that came out of him, um, all the feelings that he had had, all that pain. He drew on something real that had occurred all of his life. Um, and so that probably was the most painful thing for me. And I've only ever watched the video one time. I loved the song. I had heard the song uh, about six months before that because mm -hmm. it was written in a different context. Um, I'm totally supportive of him. I love the album. Midnight is my most favorite song on the album. It really talks um, to, my, to my heart. Um, Tyler is, is probably one of the most genuine, loving individuals you would ever meet, and always has been. And I think that the album, uh, for him, it's been very personal, and he's been able to share it to the LGBTQ community, and they have really embraced it. Um, it's a journey that many of the kids, of those kids have gone through, whether they're LDS or not. And it also speaks to anyone who is searching for a higher power, someone that they want to have influence in their life. So I'm very proud of him. He's left the church. Yes. Where is his faith today? Well, you know, when you leave a church that you've loved, um, he also lost his knowledge of God. So he had had nothing. So I guess you would say he became atheist at the beginning. And now he has kind of moved through feeling that there's something out there. He just doesn't know what that looks like. We talk about, well, maybe it's a he, maybe it's a she. And he says, you don't know, Mom. And I said, you know, I don't know for sure, but I know there's something there. And um, so he has great hope. Um, he looks, uh, he reads a lot of the words of, uh, in Buddhism right now. I think that's wonderful. I'm just really proud of his journey. It's a hard thing to lose your faith in the public eye, where everybody's got an opinion, and no one really knows him but me and his family. So I'm, I'm proud of him. He's written publicly or shared publicly in interviews that it, uh, when that video came out and that album, the relationship with the band Neon Trees uh, became a little, I don't know if strained is the word. They didn't really know what he was working on. You know, they had decided that they would take a break and they knew Tyler was going to work on a solo album for mm. a little bit and just see where things were going to go. And everybody kind of wanted to do their own projects. They have young families and wanted to do those things. So when that came out, he, he didn't give them any warning. It just came out. So it was shocking for them. And they had to take time to process it like everyone does and it's in their own time. And they've all since talked and uh, met and um, are working on new things. They're still neon trees. Uh, they love Tyler. Uh, he understands them. They, I think it's brought them to a, a, a greater degree of understanding and care, which I think is, is ultimately what we all want. 
the whole purpose of the Mama Dragons, understanding, More and, understanding care, right? and care, right? Laura, you've worked with a lot of young adults who, who say they're gay, who are bisexual, transgender, queer. Mm -hmm. For a parent who might be watching, who has a child in, this, in the same situation, and can't quite get through, or d they don't know how to deal with it, what would your advice be to them, as an educator and a mother? First, I, I just got this feeling, um, there's always been Mama Dragons. There's always been. The only difference between, uh, you know, what exists now and what has always been is the fact that we have a database of information and we can we can feel, I, I, we can feel like we're so alone, but then you reach out to someone on the internet and you figure out that you're not alone. So I think that would be one of my first messages is you're not alone. You're not alone ever, ever. And that's the message you tell young, young people when they come to you. You're not alone ever and you're loved always. It's really not any comp more complicated than that. Have you, either of you, had any interaction with leaders of the LDS Church that give you hope that things may be changing, or at least understanding? Um, I met with our uh, Area General Authority in December of 2015. Uh, he had a meeting um, in San Diego and a few of us parents who are out with their children were invited to attend. There were only 15 of us that went. We had a lot of questions, and he assured us that the brethren are working very hard to be inclusive, to show love, to, um, to validate these young people and trying to understand. Um, and so at that point we had great hope that things would change Mm -hmm. um, that we would maybe hear more from the pulpit, maybe see some more articles in the ensign, something like that, which we haven't really seen. Um, and then last summer, I met with um, a person from the, uh, Ali Isom from the um, PR department who was working on the new Gays and Mormons site that came out. Or is it called Mormons and Gays? I'm not sure which way Mormon it goes. Gay, oh, no Mormon and Gay, no That's right, yes. we were happy that the S was off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and she really shared with me uh, some personal stories of her working with the brethren, and she had a lot of hope. So after our two-hour meeting, I, I came away going, they hear, they're hearing us. But I think um, one thing that, that she brought to them were stories. And I think it's the stories of, of our LGBTQ brothers and sisters, and stories of parents and loved ones. Um, because we are all on this journey, and it's, and it's new to so many people because it's all been kept in the closet and we need to let it out so that everyone knows because everybody knows someone who's gay and mm -hmm. you may think you don't, but you do. And it's important to really learn how to accept and love and don't judge. And I know the brethren are trying to, that's what we're supposed to be doing and, I, and that's what I want to do. And so I have hope that they will hear, that they will listen more uh, to the stories and understand. Because when we fear something, it's, we fear it because we don't understand it. You recently spoke at ISU. Mm -hmm. uh, what brought you to East Idaho to, to speak at the university? What was your message there? And is this something that you plan to do at other universities? Start your speaking tour. Uh, I don't know if I want a speaking <laughs> tour. Um, I, was brought, I was contacted by Trinity Episcopal Church in Pocatello, Idaho. And they wanted to reach out. and. Um, uh, have someone to come and speak about this unconditional love and this thought and then they got involved with the Gender Resource Center at ISU and so it kind of got a little bit bigger and so my message is just um, I'm a mom I'm, I'm a mom just like Lori and I love all of my children and I'm new to this community in just a few years now and um, I we've made it work We've navigated it. We're continuing to walk through this journey. There's new things all the time that come up. Uh, being in the public eye with Tyler, it's kind of, it's almost a family thing. You know, he says something and we all have to come up with a statement or, or say something. As far as a speaking circuit, I'm open to talking to anyone who wants to listen. Uh, I love people and I love our LGBTQ plus children and young people. They want to be heard and understood and loved. Lori, there's going to be people watching this in East Idaho that have gay children 
that don't know what to do, that are active Latter-day Saints, have been their whole lives. Their children are active Latter-day Saints. What would your message be to those people watching? Just love them unconditionally. Um, and do that by everything you say, everything you do. Just love them unconditionally. Uh, I learned that from the faith that I chose. I learned that, that families are first. Um, and whatever path that takes you on is the one that you need to be on. I mean, I can't imagine not loving my children or loving my children with condition or I can't imagine that. I can't imagine them doing or being anything that I wouldn't love them. I, and I believe that there is a God that does the same thing. Um, prejudice and bigotry cannot survive content and communication. Um, I was just talking to my, my friend, my best friend's husband, <laughs> Um, and I said, Mark, is there anything that you would want me to say? And he said, yes, I want you to tell people to just come over to my house. And I said, wow, if, if there is anybody that would have the right to say, do not come over to my house, it would be you. And she, he says, oh no, I want them to come over so I can love them. And they'll change. And I thought, what a, what a great thing to do. It, it's true. Um, it's a no-brainer for us. It really is a no-brainer. Debbie, do you have a message for those moms or dads watching? I think I, I second what Lori has said. Just hug your children mm -hmm. and listen to them. They're not a freak. They're not different. They were born this way. God created them this way. And God entrusted us as their parents to raise them and to love them. And so, just love. Debbie Glenn, Lori Embry, thank you very much for joining us here on East Idaho Newsmakers. We have links to the Mama Dragons website and Facebook page uh, posted below this story. We hope you'll join us again next week. I'm Nate Eaton.